All right, welcome to Cash and Wildcat TV. Friday night basketball live from Okarchi, Oklahoma. In the heart of the Okarchi gym and the epicenter of what everything is Okarchi in terms of surrounding basketball. It is night number two. Semifinals, console, uh, winner's side bracket of the Three Rivers Tournament. I'm Eamon Abavi. Joining me here courtside tonight is my man, illustrious alum, Luke Jenkins. Luke, welcome back. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, I could get out of the Piedmont gym. We don't usually run stuff <laughs> on Fridays, so I got out here ready to watch some good basketball. I absolutely love having Luke here. He's an absolute uh, coach on the sidelines, but a coach and a, a great color analyst for us here on CWTV. So anytime we can get you, we can grab you. And uh, you probably saw my eyes light up when I saw you hanging out on the uh, concourse here in this beautiful gym. But we appreciate you joining us. Wildcats moved to 6-2 and two with the uh, – Thursday night, uh, uh, last stanza game win over OBA. It was the second game in 48 hours against the Oklahoma ba uh, Bible Academy. The Trojans go down this time 48-38. Uh, they had a couple of players, one of their better players, uh, return back from a trip to Colorado, and it uh, was a little bit of a difference. Uh, Wildcats went in double digits uh, Tuesday night, come back uh, Thursday night with a win here. Uh, again, Wildcats ranked 12th in Class 2A, 6-2. Uh, Wildcats had a, a nice, another nice night uh, by a slew of players. That's been the story. It's, you know, we've got a kid go off for maybe 23 here once in a while, but, you know, it's 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 a couple kids in double digits and about five or six other kids scoring. Uh, last night it just happens to be Nathan Abavi's turn. He was the leading scorer with 14 points, finished with five assists, two rebounds. Uh, right behind him was Jackson Vandruff with 13 points. He had seven total rebounds uh, and then, Camden Miller and you wouldn't expect Cam Miller as one of your smaller guards but uh, he finished with nine had a rough start first half but came through and had seven rebounds to help from the point guard spot we got an Alex in the Bobby side and good to see you son yeah all right we'll get some hugs I appreciate you baby all right uh, and then to round out scoring we had Chance Acord with four Drake Woody with six on a couple of threes uh, and then uh, Caleb Schaefer who had a great night 10 points the first night was kind of slowed down a little bit had just two points uh, but uh, came through with a few rebounds as well. Wildcats again on the night, uh, a poultry, <laughs> uh, I, we'll, we'll just say it was a, a poultry 26% from three field. It wasn't your better night and a little bit better from the free throw line to last night at 60%. So we'll take that. Uh, but the Wildcats are going to definitely need more of that uh, and can't waste any opportunities uh, as we think about uh, Coach Brady Page, ranked number fourth uh, in this class 2 8 and, and his Hennessy Eagles ranked uh, at 7 and 2. You spend a lot of time with the with the group in Hennessy. Uh, what's the what's the scouting report for Coach Page and this uh, this 2022-2023 Hennessy Eagles team? Uh, defensively, you can expect um, well, I expect to see a lot of three two. That's basically all I've seen a Coach Page team run, um, and maybe a little bit of full court diamond as well. And then offensively, um, I expect a lot of Torres early and often inside. Um, I've watched a few of their games already this season. If we leave Jackson in their one-on-one. -on -one. I think he's going to have a little bit of trouble. We've got a lot of quick guards, and I expect us to double early and often. And you've also got uh, James Sims, who's a bigger forward, can put it on the floor a little bit. He's going to attack the rim. And then you've got a lot of guards that are, are kind of interchangeable. They're all going to look to shoot, and if one of them's hot, then he'll continue to shoot. But they're kind of more hit or miss, and you're looking for those inside players to really lead Hennessy offensively. All right, so a great scouting report there, and definitely uh, – I uh, really appreciate you, Luke, coming in. Uh, from a standpoint of the schedule-wise, the uh, again, uh, the two losses coming to number four in Class 3A, Crooked Oak. We know Crooked Oak's always got a good basketball team. And then Kellyville out on the east side, they're number 13 in 3A. So there are two losses coming against ranked opponents. Uh, and then, you know, you'd offer up their, their, their one big ranked win is against number 17 in Class A Regent Prep. Just coming off a big win off of uh, here Thursday night against Thomas where they run 70-42. to 42. Again, a comparative uh, team here for uh, between the two squads uh, again appreciate you guys joining us here on cash and wildcats tv the number one uh, streaming service here in small town athletics we appreciate the squirtle.tv family for bringing us and all the fantastic folks here at okarchi i i didn't uh, I, I didn't tempt myself into the uh hospitality room to get some aishin's chicken but i might do that by tomorrow night just flashing my uh media credentials we'll see what happens but uh I had Aishans before this yeah, game. Yeah, so okay. I've if so, I'm in Okarchi for more than two days, I'm going to have Aishans on one of the two. I can promise you that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we can't do this again without our fantastic sponsors. You'll see them in the right-hand corner. 
uh, of the screen. But, of course, our basketball boosters uh, can't do it without them as well, keeping us fresh and looking clean. Toby and Bobby Gump, Gateway Realty, Restoration Inc., Omnilux Spa, Specialty Roofing, Slovacek Family, Niemeyer Family, Blue Ribbon Shaddix Family, Rural Pest Solutions, Oakley Family, Carlene Gooden, Waste Connections, El Charo, Rhino Roofing, Zeiser LLC, Wilbrook Williams Family, Triplet Land, Jenkins Family there, uh, as well as uh, Superior Construction Management, Stellar Design Homes, Aaron and Debbie Little Family, Premier Eye Care, and Oki Care. Can't, uh, Oki Creed, I apologize. Really appreciate our basketball boosters and, of course, all of our fantastic folks there. And, again, you'll see them in the right-hand corner uh, helping us keep Squirtle.tv and Cash and Wildcat TV free of charge. Wherever we can get there, if we can get there, we're going to stream it for you. And we appreciate all those fine sponsors making us free of charge. And, of course, Community State Bank, uh, our scoreboard uh, sponsor for the entire season. So we got a little little three-on-two warm-up here. Uh, for the Wildcats, uh, you know, Luke, you've watched a little bit. What's What stood out to you with this particular squad this year? Um, they are, are getting better as they go along, which is something you can expect when, you know, you've got kids that haven't got a lot of varsity time up until this season. Um, but I've been really encouraged with the guard play and then the bigs. Everyone has bought in this season. You know, they're all playing hard. They all play team defense. They're all rebounding well. And you have to beat the Cash and Wildcats. They're not just going to let you come in here and win a game because you think you're supposed to beat them. You're going to have to take it from them. Um, I think if we can take care of the basketball and hopefully shoot it a little bit better than we did last night, then I think we will be in a good opportunity to win this game. Yeah, I loved hearing that, loved seeing that. Again, uh, Wildcats uh, will start uh, a couple of sophomores, a couple of juniors, and a senior, as you mentioned, Luke. Uh, none of them with any really extensive minutes until the start of this year. So, you know, what I've, I've talked about in the past is just continued growth uh, and continued development through the course of the season, leading to a, a chance for their best opportunity to win out uh, once they get playoff starts. So the Wildcats in their black tops, black bottoms. You've seen that look before. A uh, little gold trim here as the Wildcats will be the away team. Home team will be the Hennessy Eagles. All uh, white tops, white bottoms, little blue flare. I don't know if you call that royal blue or navy blue, but uh, we'll take it. Uh, but, again, appreciate you guys joining us here. Uh, Wildcats starters uh, will be announced here. Or I guess we, will we be announcing starters? It looks like we won't. So uh, for you guys at home, uh, Nathan Abavi, junior guard, Camden Miller, sophomore guard, Jackson Vandriff, senior center, Drake Woody, sophomore guard, and Chance Acord, junior wing. Uh, and for the uh, Hennessy Eagles, Sim, Simonek, Weber, Choate, and Torres. So for the jump will be Jackson Vandriff, and we're going to have basketball here as Torres will get the ball, and Wildcats will come start off on defense. Wildcats and a man, looks like. It'll be matching up here as Nababi up top with uh, number 30, Leighton Choate, out to the wing. Dumped down quickly. Torres is out top, and there's the uh, pass intended for him. is stolen. So we did a good job right there just holding it up and letting Chance be alone on there in the island. He did a good job. And there's that 3-2 look you talked about as Nababi off the wing with Drake Woody. Vandra fighting hard inside with James Sims. We'll see that all night. Acord flashing in and out and through the cross the lane. Wildcats stay patient, Trying to look for that Jackson Vandriff uh, find there as he kind of scrums around the low block. I think Coach Hardaway is going to be content to be very patient against this, especially while it's 0-0 and the game's tight. And there's that zone. A little pressure there. Vandra finds Nababi down low. Nababi wisely pulls back. He had eight court for a second. Took care of the ball as Wildcats will set up. And you talked about that earlier on when we were talking about this game. They'll try to pick their poison or pick their spots to hit a quick trap on a guard or two. And there you saw it just then as they try to get Cam Miller, the, the sophomore. There's an encouraging sign by Cam right there to be able to take care of the basketball. Probably felt that he got fouled, but still can get it out of his hands without giving it to the other team. Jackson Vandriff has relocated the high post. You've got Acord. No left, left hand baseline look. Now Bobby had uh, a drifting, drifting to Cam Miller on the three ball. Cam will look at that three, uh, that left hand dribble penetration baseline. I'd like to see that from our guards, at least uh, drawing Torres out to play a little defense. Wildcats staying patient. 6.23 here, first quarter. Wildcats on their first possession. Still looking for something here. There's that trap up top. No push. As Cam Miller gets pushed off the sideline. Nababi with the loose ball, and he'll get the foul. So uh, hand-checking, certainly something to watch here on those traps. I uh, appreciate our officials. Got a great three-man crew. They'll be finishing out the night for us. Uh, regular faces. I know you've seen them around Luke every once in a while. For sure, and it's the last game of the night in the tournament. You can expect it to be a little more physical than the rest of them. Uh, the referees, as long as everyone else, are probably ready to go home. <laughs> Floater Cam Miller, no good. Good look there by the sophomore. 
I like the aggressive take. Rebound to Torres, quickly down are the Eagles. So two minutes in, 0-0. Zero, zero. We've had two shots. Yeah, we've got two coaches right here that are both going to be okay with being patient. And there's Torres' first touch of the game. We immediately double. Torres' right hand is up, floating away to the baseline. Torres, great body control, is able to get that bucket. Little pressure here, a little 2-2-1. Wildcats will take their time back and forth. Drake Woody with the point there. Nababi will split the will split the trap. And the assist to Jackson Vandrick. What a great play. The Wildcats knotted up 2-2. It's a creative finish by Jackson there. And a good job by Nate. Probably wanted to take another dribble, but got caught and still got the basketball over there where it needed to be. So Wildcats knotted up. 5-19 first quarter. We appreciate you joining us here. Last game of the night here, day two, semifinals. Three Rivers Conference Tournament. Wildcats in that man defense pressuring up top of James Sims on the high post. Torres will shoot the three. That one's off the back iron. Chased down by Cam Miller. Another rebound. He had seven last night. No numbers. We'll get back to Nababi. A little back and forth game between the fellas. Outside look here as Acord will eventually get it from Drake Woody. And that'll go off the foot of Torres and it'll stay Wildcat basketball on the end line. What do you think about the pace thus far, Luke? I think it probably favors us just a little bit, but you know, I'm not really sure. These are two good basketball teams that both coaches want to play patient, and I can see this basketball game going really any way. I think it will open up a little bit as these teams feel each other out a little bit more. Yep. Uh, both of these teams like to score. I don't think either one of them wanted to only score two points in the first <laughs> three minutes of the game, but you know, sometimes that's how it happens yep. if you're not really sure what to expect defensively. Hey Amen, I love it. So great look inside off the end line pass to Jackson Vandruff opposite block. He doesn't get the basket, but does draw the foul against Torres. That's his first foul, second foul on the Eagles. Uh, Vandruff uh, with the miss. Again, uh, you know, we've said it. I, I'm just, just going to stop talking about it. So we'll just we'll just move on as the Wildcats are about 45% free throw shooters. Get that one fall. So Vat, Vandruff has all three points for the Wildcats. They're up. They take their first lead with 445, 3-2. Leighton Choate, senior out to Torres. Torres, a little spot up three. That one's off again. And guess who? Cam Miller with another rebound. Smallest guy on the court. He's got two rebounds right here. Done. He had seven. He's been doing a fantastic job. Doing whatever he can to participate and lead this team. Now Bobby will work off the switch. Left hand A cord. Little Cincinnati here. Let's see if we can get someone to dive. Now Bobby's got the ball. A lot of, a lot of crowded space over there. Vance gets it out. Wildcats will reset. And Jackson Vandrup is hanging out in that short corner. And I'm, I'm guessing we're looking for... That was pretty fortunate there. A little tip out. Good effort there by Hunter Weber, the sophomore. That was very close to coming off of Nathan Abavi. We've got pretty good seats here, don't we? Well, we do. And what we're trying to do right here is get in a gap, and then hopefully Sims on that backside will sneak up to our guards. But they've been running this 3-2 a very long time, and they're super disciplined out of it. So. Skip pass across the horn to Vandruff, and there it is. Great job on Abavi starting that. You don't, like in hockey, you don't get a double assist on that pass, but great job splitting the trap, getting it out to the wing to Woody. Woody finding Vandruff. Wildcats up 5 2. And so there we work the ball from one side of the floor to the other, and that makes it, the defense move a little bit more as opposed to just a standard dribble drive. One and done again, another three ball that doesn't go. That time it was Seth Simonek who shot that one. Drake Woody with the uh, rebound. Drake has been rebounding fantastic the last couple games as well. Guards uh, coming in to help out. Cam Miller on the right side working against that 3-2. Acord will try to dive. Nothing there. We'll reset. This time uh, Jackson Vandruff is over on the short corner on the left side along with Drake Woody. So the Wildcats just kind of flip-flopping the, the, the scheme. Acord gets blocked down, dumped down to Bobby. Skip pass across the block, and that's another assist. And Jackson Vandruff, yes, sir, he has got all seven Wildcat points. Great drive there by Nababi. He had a chance to shoot, found Vandruff, fed the man. Hey, take care of Love Our Thomas guys out there. Radio, no walk call. Little Euro step through, and it's good. Give credit to Seth Simonek on that left hand drive. And now we got a 2 2 1 3 quarter court press. Get the ball to Jackson inside, and that should let us break it. A cord on the baseline drive, and we'll have a jump ball so that one will stay here for Cashin as the Hennessy Eagles won the tip checking in for Simonic is number 25 
That's Brandon Rodriguez, a sophomore. A lot of sophomores here uh, and, and juniors. Uh, just a couple seniors that you'll see, Simonek and Leighton Choate. I feel like uh, J.L. Torres has been there for about 112 years. Anytime a freshman comes in and makes an immediate impact on a varsity team, then by the time they're a senior, you just feel like they've been there eight or nine years. <laughs> that right there is a foul you don't want to see. Even if you don't think you foul, there's no reason to reach 94 yep. feet from the basket. I agree, I agree. That's a tough one. And then we'll go against Cam Miller. That's the first on the Wildcats. 219 first quarter. Nice three look there by Drake Woody. His first clean look of the night. That just goes in and out. Would have been a big one for the Wildcats. Cashin hanging on to a three-point lead. Torres high post. Vandriff matched up with him. That goes in and out. Ooh. Nice block out there by Nabavi as uh, Rodriguez was on his back. That one will go in the hands of the Wildcats. Wildcats will reset. We showed a little bit of 2-3 defensively on the possession right there. Just mixing it up. And when you have a good offensive team like Hennessy, if you can show them different defensive looks, you might be able to keep them frustrated. Nabavi with the skip pass. He'll dive left hand. He's looking for Vandriff. Oh, probably. Walked. And that's a, that's, that's a time and place where Nabavi was too unselfish, needed to take that left hand to the cup as Vandriff attracted two players. So he's got to understand that. But fortunate to, on, the, on, the, on the missed shot, there was a walk back down into Cam Miller on the low block. He'll start over, eight court up top. 137 first quarter. And you talked about it. They're showing that kind of surprise trap. And they, they picked a couple of guys here there. They picked on actually all three of the guards thus far. Wildcats have been... Somewhat successful through it, creating a couple buckets. We've got Vandra flashing the high post. Let's see if the Wildcats will work as he's got Rodriguez on him. Nabavi on the wing. Three ball is up. Bang! Nathan Nabavi from the kick from Vandruff, and that's how you draw it up. That is exactly what you want to do against the 3-2 zone. Hit the high post and hit the corner three. So Nabavi gets his first buckets of the game. Under a minute, 10-4. Wildcats biggest lead of six. Great drive there by James Sims on the baseline, left hand. Someone is going to have to step in front of that and cut him off because if he's going straight to the rim like that, it's going to be very hard for a Wildcat to stop him. Wildcats need to get it across here. And Coach Hardaway doesn't even want to mess with it. So uh, he'll take the timeout, and we'll take the timeout. So Wildcats up 10-6, 40 seconds left. We'll be right back in 30. For 31 years and counting, Community State Bank has taken great pride in being your hometown bank. With branches located in Cashin, Dover, and Hennessy, CSB strives to reflect the small town hospitality these communities are known for. Our friendly staff is here to serve you and provide one of the best banking experiences around, equipping our customers with the latest in banking technology combined with a personal down-home relationship. Come into one of our local branches or visit us at www.mycsb.com. Community State Bank, small town banking, the way it should be member fdic all right welcome back first quarter action cash and taking on the hennessy eagles three rivers tournament neiman bobby luke jenkins bringing you tonight's semifinal game here winner will take on okarchi loser will take on fairview tomorrow night or afternoon wildcats again up 10-6 it's been a great start for jackson vandruff drake woody trying to get past here into vandruff skip past the miller miller will take that dive and Acord will shoot the three from the baseline. This in and out will get his own offensive rebound. Spin move to the cup. No good. Vandra for the offensive board. And doesn't go. Wildcats with a great opportunity there. Unfortunate. See, right there, the difference between the two drives on Sims is someone meets him outside of the lane there. Makes that layup a lot more difficult than just letting him get all the way to the cup. Bobby with the last second shot. Pulls up. Draws a couple there with about six seconds. Calls for the foul there are, are not uh, received. And so with that, up to the end of the first quarter. Wildcats up 10-6. I think that if you would have told Coach Hardaway at the end of the first quarter you could be at 10-6 against the Hennessy Eagles tonight, I think he would have taken it. You think I know, so? I would have taken it as a fan. Um, <laughs> now, you'd like to be up a little bit more, but any lead against a team with that kind of size – they're not a three-point shooting team. Right. So whereas a four-point lead against maybe an Okarchi or like an us last year is not safe at all. Not to say a four-point lead is ever going to be safe. But against a team that's really only doing their damage at the cup, any lead feels a little bit better. Yep. I'll take it. I agree with you. I'll take a 2-1 victory. I, I, I would as well. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of the first quarter there. We'll have to start the second here again for the Wildcats. Caleb Schaefer 
has checked in for Jackson Vandruff. He gets a well-deserved break. He has seven points, seven of the Wildcats' ten. And uh, Anthony Wilburn, the sophomore forward, kind of do it all. The kid just rebounds, blocks out, kind of does the ugly stuff that uh, that you need, you know, uh, a guy to do for you on the low block, and it will hit the occasional three for you. Reminds you of a, a guy that we know, Nick Nababi. So uh, Eagles with the ball on the possession here, start of the second quarter. Can appreciate you guys joining us. Neiman Nababi, Luke Jenkins here. A little high trap there, a little out of the 2-3. Driving right hand, or is no good by number three, James Sims. Good take. I like the athletic move. Kid's got good length. Rebound will go to the Wildcats. Eagles stay in that 3-2. Drake Woody at the top of this. Nababi will relocate to the high post as Wilburn will work the edge. We've got Caleb Schaefer working from block to block. Again, Wildcats, uh, whoop, there's the reach, and that's foul number two. So Nababi stretches Torres out. He tried to get that. That's a good job there by Nababi showing some strength. It's a good job by Nathan not waiting on the ball and going out there to meet it. Draw on that foul. If we can keep him in foul trouble throughout the game, that will make the game a, quite a bit easier. Wilburn with the inbounds from the sideline from Cam Miller. Wildcats will reset. Bobby working on that screen and roll down right across the free throw lane. Bobby will get that. He'll draw the double inside pass. Great pass to Schaefer and one. Now Bobby staying patient with another assist. And guess who? It's Caleb Schaefer. Welcome. Young senior. <laughs> you can hear Coach Hardaway yelling at Nate to just keep working because they're covering him at, at that high post area. All you need is just one touch. And so we work the ball around a little bit, get the ball to the high post. And then once you get it to the middle on the 3-2, I'm underneath that top layer of players. So I've got three defenders behind me, and it's really easy to attack it after that. Foul will go against a sophomore, Brandon Rodriguez. Caleb Schaefer with their free throw. That's long. K chance Acor had a chance there. So nice work there as the Wildcats extend that lead to six, 12 to six, uh, under a minute here in the second quarter. And the Wildcats showing a 2-3 again right here. So we've got Wilburn and Cam Miller up top. Acord and Nababi on the low block. Schaefer cruising the middle of the lane there, keeping their eye on the Torres kid. He's a threat, three balls up, that's off. Offensive rebound back to the Eagles, and they'll start over. Good effort there by Seth Simonet, keeping that going. Another three balls up. That one's long. No over the back. They'll get it. Great job by Nababi with the block out, and he'll get the senior Semenik with another foul, and that's foul number two for him, six on the Eagles. That's probably Nate's third, at, at least his third foul drawn today, maybe even his fourth or fifth. Reminds me a little bit of Jonah just doing that all the time. If I'm in the right position, even if I'm smaller than the other player, just by a little bit, once my body moves, I can get a lot of the whistles. He's done a great job of that so far tonight. Full court press. Dangerous Ooh. pass to Cam Miller. Miller will split it. Now Bobby will get the loose ball. He'll curl back out wisely as Torres had him in the lane. Skip pass inside. Oh, great look there and a dive by Jackson Vandruff. Just couldn't finish. One and done for the Wildcats. Eagle, Eagles quickly down. Choate. Inside to Simonek, that yeah. will get the block. That's a tough call as uh, James Sims is able to draw the foul. It'll be a two-shot variety here. I guess Jackson may have had his hips turned. I don't know, just maybe caught in the wrong spot. That's a tough well, once, call. I, I think that the referee may be deemed because we've got an athletic kid shooting the free throw. I think he took off a little bit earlier than Jackson expected, and so if – once I am in the air, if you move at all to yeah. hit me, it's going to be a foul. Cut. And so I think that may have been the situation there. Right. Or if it's someone we're more used to playing that can't jump quite as far, I don't know if he's going to get that whistle. Yeah, good call. Appreciate it. Sims misses the first, misses the second. Vandriff will get the van, uh, uh, rebound. And Cam Miller will draw the pressure. Nababi on the wing. Back and forth. Little ball fake. Wildcats. Nababi quickly down that right hand. And he's going to draw another foul. That's foul number six. That one will go against number 10, Garrett Vinson, the junior who's checked in. So for the Wildcats, we've got Miller, Woody, Nabavi, Acord, and Jackson Vandruff. So Vinson coming in off the bench for Hennessy, he is someone that I would say is a shooter. Um, he's been in and out of our Piedmont gym every once in a while, and he can put the ball in the hole. So that's one I would like to know where he is on the perimeter, de def perimeter defensively. And they find him right there. Quickly is Cam Miller. He must have read your scouting report. Skip pass around. Three balls up by Choate. That's no good. Nabobby with a rebound. Nabobby 
As Vandruff down at the block, didn't see him. Good decision right there. So You're up six right here. It's a nice little inflection point. If we can score and go up eight, um, even waste a little bit of time on the on, time off the clock, I think you just want something real sweet right here. Miller eyes the three. Wildcats stay patient here as Drake Woody runs the top, looking for that screen from Jackson Vandruff, high post. As he's running around the free throw line, skip pass, nice feed. Vandruff right hand is up, no good. Gets his offensive rebound over the back, and that's foul number three on Torres. I think they're going to have it on Sims. Three inside, yeah. Okay. Torres is extremely lucky there as he was over the back. That Vandruff showing his strength. Great pass from Cam Miller on the diving Vandruff from the elbow. Misses it, gets his own rebound, misses it again, but goes back to the line, and Unfortunate there for Vandruff. Not able to uh, finish at the free throw line. Drake Woody will have a seat as Caleb Schaefer will check in. And uh, Nathan Obavi will have his first seat of the game. 5-13 second quarter as Anthony Wilburn checks in. I think Coach Page will trap as soon as Camden Miller passes the ball the next time we're down the floor. Because we've got uh, now two of our three starting guards on the bench. And that's just something that Hennessy's had in their playbook for a very long time. So Vandruff 0 for 4 from the line, or 0 for 3, I apologize. Schaefer on Torres, great job. Actually, no over the back call. Should have been unfortunate. Wow. So Caleb Schaefer flashing some good, solid D on the baseline, draws the miss. Vandruff had a chance at the, uh, at the defensive board. Looks like he tipped it out. It'll be a fresh start here for the uh, Eagles. Torres on the wing. Another That time... Again, same situation. Give credit to Sims, taking it to Schaefer. Not sure what Schaefer can do there, but uh, he'll draw the foul. He's just looking at the arms right there, and some officials, the second you come down, they really don't care if you hit them. If you come down, they're going to call the foul. Do you ever think that contact to the chest makes your immediately makes your hands go down, though, naturally? No, no I don't, because I'm a guard. <laughs> Sims with the free throw. He's got three. And as you said on cue, uh, Wildcats will give the bigs a rest and we'll go small. I really love that substitution by Coach Hardaway because I mean, he's coached against Coach Page for a long time, so he has to know <laughs> that trap is coming. So get me a little bit more ball handling in, offense, defense, substitution. Second one is up. Uh, Wilburn, a little hot potato there. He'll get that rebound off the miss. 7-12 here, Wildcats up five. Cam Miller right side. Wildcats stay impatient, back and forth, get across the timeline, look for the trap, dump down to Wilburn. Around the horn it goes, Nababi baseline will drive, kick back out to Woody, Wildcats will reset, around the horn, Miller had a chance, he bobbled it just a little, what had a chance at the three. I'd like to see the Wildcats maybe look to see if they can't get Acord situated here. He's got Torres matched up on him, maybe try to get his third. 4.23 second quarter, and it's been a good one. Yeah, but, ooh, ooh. Cam Miller, great hustle there on the loose balls. Wilds Cats retain possession. Wilburn in and Nababi. I'm not sure how that ball got in there. They're going to call a walk. So Nababi, who has drawn a lot of fouls earlier, getting beat up uh, this time around, gets a conversation. Nathan, don't talk to him. Nababi will have a seat on the turnover. Max Brown will check in. Drake Woody will have a seat as the Wildcats will bring the bigs back out. So Wildcats going mega big here with Brown, Schaefer, and Vandruff. Match up with Wilburn and Cam Miller. Sims again, trying to stay hot. Torres with a rebound. That goes off. Schaefer with a tough rebound there as uh, it looked like Sims was over his back, was able to retain uh, his control, didn't walk. This game has been physical through this first half so far, and I expect it to just get more and more physical. And I think what maybe has started to happen is Ooh. Oh, we'll have a foul on Wilburn. Uh, they'll say tipped and foul. Yep, they sure will. So Wilburn will go to the line for three. Continue your thoughts. Well, what I was going to say before then, I think the refs looked up and realized, hey, we've already called seven fouls on Hennessy and three on Cashin, and we continue to call everything that Hennessy does. Well, they're fouls, though, uh, aren't they? They, they are <laughs> fouls. But if we continue to call everything that Hennessy does, then at some point it's going to be 10 to 3 up there, and it's – you're supposed to just officiate the game, but it is very hard to just okay. officiate the game. And so I do expect, I think, we're, I say all that to say I expect us to get a few more 
fouls called on us um, in these next three and, 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 a, and go a little bit loose against uh, against uh, the Eagles. Well, well, then they I say that, but if they were going to do that, then that's a very easy yeah. call to yeah. not make yeah. over there on that three point shooter. So I could just be uh, conspiratorial. I don't know if that's a word, but. Woo, Max Brown showing you those ups, comes over. Great help side D with the block on Torres. Torres is like, well, what happened there? Wilburn completes one of three on that three-point opportunity. Vandruff high post, skip pass Good to pass. Brown. Three balls up. Oh Bang, Max goodness. Brown. I absolutely love it. The senior chipping in. Wildcats with their biggest lead of nine, 16-7. Timeout. And Max Brown getting some encouragement off the bench. I love it. It's a really good set right there for Max Brown to come in, play some defense, has a wide open shot. You know, sometimes you got players coming off the bench that won't take that, has the confidence to take it and knock it down. <laughs> and cold, too. But, no, I hear you on the uh, foul count. I totally get it. Looks like Coach Page is having a conversation with Sims and, and Torres to say settle down a little bit here. It's early on. Just a – you know, 16 to 7. This game is clearly, clearly uh, within arm's length for our, either team. We've got three minutes left. Again, we appreciate you guys joining us here on Cash and Wildcats TV. I don't know if you can even see the clock. Uh, it, it is what it is, but uh, we appreciate you joining us here on a Friday night live from Okarchi. What do you think about this gym? Uh, I love it. My mom and I were talking about it. The only thing she says she doesn't like is the yellow O, but I love the yellow O. I think that... You should. I think we should have a C in our stand. Yep. I think you should have as much customization in your gym as possible because it's your gym. If someone's in here playing Okarchi, they should be able to look anywhere and know where they're at. Yep. No, I love it. I love it. Three balls off there. I believe uh, one and done for the Eagles. Quickly down is Cam Miller. Actually, slowly down. Double high screen here. Looking for that roll. Not there. Vandriff will help out. It's always nice to have a Jackson Vandriff to help. Max Brown, why not? Yeah, back in, a little back and forth between Vandruff. Vandruff will get the foul. It's a great job. Nice find there by Max Brown on the cutting he Jackson was. Vandruff. What's nice about having athletes on the floor is you don't even have to throw a perfect pass all the time. All right. like you overthrow Max a little bit, he can come and get it. You throw it a little bit too high for Jackson, it doesn't matter. He can jump up there and get it. So Vandruff shooting one of t uh, first of two. <laughs> Goodness. So number 10 will check out. That's his second for Garrett Vinson. Checking back in him is number 24, Ethan Moore, the junior. Nabavi and Acor check back in. Looks like that will leave Caleb Schaefer, Jackson Vandruff, and Max Brown on the court. Second shot is up, and that one falls, so thank God. And 24 is Ethan Monroe. Monroe. I only know because I spent okay. a, What did I say? Did I say something wrong? I think you said Ethan Moore, but just okay. reading it maybe yeah. a little bit too fast. He's yeah. one of the Hennessy kids we've had through our gyms doing some shooting workouts with. Okay. A little inside scout there. Wildcats a uh, little 2-3. I expect it. Quickly down as the Hennessy Eagles wide open is number 22, Hunter Weber. That one is short. Rebound. Looks like it'll be on the floor. Yeah, it's going to be a foul on Camden right there, I believe. Oh, no. So that one will go against Rodriguez's. <laughs> as over the back on Brandon Rodriguez will draw the ire of the Hennessy Eagle fans. And this I, is where if I was an Eagle fan, I'd be pointing to the scoreboard. I definitely agree with you there. I am not, I'm not sure if that, well, but if that needs to be foul, called on either. And that's just, I mean. Let it play. Let him play, but I'm a little bit smaller. You know, I'm sure I got that foul every once in a while. Hits the free throw, and I'm sure, as a lot of people know, ball doesn't lie, so he messed the foul <laughs> in right there. So Cam Miller knocks the first uh, uh, front end of the one-and-one one here, or the two-shot two, two shot foul, up, double bonus for the Wildcats with 10 the Eagles. Hits both. That's his first two points of the game. Wildcats extend that lead 19-7. to 2-3 look here for the Wildcats. Sims that left side, right side, back and forth. They're going to get Torres at the high post. Little drive and kick. Wildcats stay impatient. Three balls up by Hunter Weber, and that's good. So okay, and he's one that can get hot in a hurry, so I expect us to maybe try to show, even though he's that's the first one he's hit tonight, if he hits another two or three, and this game's suddenly a lot closer than it is. Wildcats bust the press. Inside pass. Goes Ooh, up. No foul. Great block right there. Good block there by James Sims as Nabavi was looking for Vandruff on the cut. Nice little underhand pass. Good defense by the Eagles. There's that man, Weber, who had that last three. He'll give it up. And we'll have a foul on the floor. That one will go against Cam Miller on the hold. 
Yeah. And see, my, that's how Cam plays defense every single time. So if that's a foul, and it probably is, then it is a foul a lot more often, and then the foul count could be a little bit closer. I just don't like any fans being able to look, you know, I don't want anyone to walk out of the I game love it this way. I oh, love it this I mean, way. I, I, do, I do love it this way as a I know. I'm fan, giving you a hard time. I, know. I would like to beat someone without them being able to say anything. And there's uh, – That's Hunter Weber Hunter back Weber to back. right again, back to back threes. And three. they get the ball back, they're going to come down here and run a set for him to try to hit another one. So uh, the three ball is an equalizer. A court inside Ooh. to – Van Griffin will get the foul, and that'll be uh, foul number three on Rodriguez, and that'll send Jackson Van Griffin. I guess if you're going to foul somebody, that's the person to foul tonight. That's a good point, and I wouldn't be surprised if down here Coach Hardaway maybe junked a little bit, but then you've got to be wary about the two bigs, but you've got to have a hand in Hunter Weber's face. Van Griffin shooting two and gets the first. like seeing that. A lot of substitutions here is number 10, uh, Garrett Vincent, a junior guard, will come in for Rodriguez, who has three fouls. Coach Hardaway getting his defense called here as we've got Schaefer, Acor, Vandruff, Woody, and Nabavi. Makes both. Love seeing that. He's got 10. 20 seconds. Wildcats up 8, 21 to 13. It's We're been a man here on defense to close the half. Nabavi's matched up on uh, Monroe or on uh, Weber. I think they're going to get Caleb Schaefer with the foul, potentially, one of our bigs inside. But Nathan's doing a good job of just chasing around the shooter. He's got, he knows he's got one job this play to make sure he can't get a wide open three. Baseline out of bounds, Coach Hardaway will always go to this 2-3 zone. Torres, long three. It's deep. It's off the iron to Bobby. Oh, that's just unfortunate. So the basket goes at the bucket at, at the end of the uh, end of the second quarter, in and out of the hands of Nabavi. He drawed some contact from behind. We'll give credit to number 10, Garrett Vinson, with the basket. And that'll be the end of the second quarter, first half action. Your Wildcats up 25-15. It was up to at least 10-point lead for the Wildcats. It shrunk back to six. We'll go to timeout. Be right back. Appreciate you joining us here on Cash and Wildcats TV. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Cash and FBC is a church seeking to grow in Christ and our love for the body of Christ. With ministries from children to youth to adults, we strive to present the gospel in an engaging and meaningful way. Sunday school meets at 9.45 a.m. and worship starts at 11 a.m. Children and youth meet on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Please check our website at cashinfbc.org for more information and we hope to see you this Sunday. Located a half mile east of Cashin. Oklahoma Career Tech's been serving up skills for doers just like you for over 100 years. But this ain't your great Grammys of Pop Pop Tech School. Oklahoma's favorite place to learn new skills keeps learning new tricks. Everyone knows the best way to learn is to do it yourself. Sir, you okay? Because you shouldn't have to wait to do what you love. Whatever you choose to do, do you. Oklahoma Career Tech. Absolute Pools, Lawns, and Landscape is not your ordinary pool builder. From traditional to exotic and anything in between, our staff offers paramount quality and service through the entire design and build process. We provide service to the entire OKC metro and surrounding towns. So relax knowing our team is wholeheartedly committed to building a trusting and lasting relationship with you. Visit us on Facebook or give us a call today at 405-285-9729. Absolute Pools, Lawns, and Landscape. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, and we are here to help.
Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. Kyle and Gina Van Druff have the answers to all your real estate and insurance needs. These guys will have you covered in a one-stop shopping experience. They are local agents, local supporters, and active in the Cashin community. They are also proud parents of past and present Cashin students. Kyle and Gina help their clients make the right choice. Don't wait till it's too late. Call 405-607-4300. Go Wildcats and number 88. Let's have a great year. Walk it up. Get you some. Now is the time to protect your family with Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi. Internet security is becoming more of a fear every day. Protect your family against malware, viruses, intrusions, cyber attacks, and more. Modern internet deserves modern security. Get the best of both worlds with Pioneer in-home Wi-Fi. Storm season is coming, people, and your first choice for roofing needs should be Rhino Roofing. Locally owned and operated, the Rhino specializes in all types of repair and replacement. Large scale, traditional, modern, unique roof lines, they can do it all. Protect your home and your family with the specialized services of Rhino Roofing. Visit our Facebook page today and make an appointment. Rhino Roofing is all the hype for any roof type. Looking for a solution to your water well problem or just needing a new well drilled? Western Drilling does water well drilling and repair. They are experts in pumping system installation, troubleshooting, and repair. Western Drilling works with domestic, ag, and irrigation wells. Give them a call today and explore all the solutions. Western Drilling supports Cash and High School. Go Wildcats! Legacy Insurance and Financial Services is proud to be on Main Street in Cashin, Oklahoma, supporting our Wildcats while riding business throughout Oklahoma and surrounding states. Legacy agents who share over 40 years of experience will shop many carriers to fulfill all of your insurance and investment needs. We welcome face-to-face -face meetings, but if your needs require an online virtual relationship, we are versed at those too. Let the team of Chris Gibson, Chris Cochran, Aaron Phoenix, and Christina Branson at Legacy Insurance and Financial Services help you build your own legacy, one you will be proud to live and to leave. All right, welcome back. Third quarter action about to start here, about two minutes away. Appreciate you joining us here on CatchinWildcats.tv, powered by Scordle, Neiman Abavi, Luke Jenkins, bringing you tonight's semifinal action from the Three Rivers Tournament, live from the uh, Palace in Okarchi, Oklahoma. Big thanks and shout out to my man Maddox Gibson and and uh, Hank Brown on the cameras for us. We've got uh, up top and on the court. And so as we uh, break down the Wildcats' 21-15 lead, uh, We'll start with my man Jackson Vandruff's 10 points. What do you think about Jackson there in the first half and how Coach is kind of working to get him the ball? Uh, he's done a great job inside, drew some quick fouls on Torres, and then he's got to play a little bit softer 
and they're afraid to foul him. Jack could have a lot more points if he could hit a few more of his yep. free throws. Yep. Um, but we've seen it all year. Uh, Caxton's a little bit different this year. We're going to go inside first, and then until you stop us inside, we're going to keep going into Jackson. Yep. And so far, they haven't been able to, so I expect us to keep hitting that high post and keep trying to work that high-low action. I love it. So Wildcats uh, getting three from Max Brown off the bench, three from Nathan Abavi, two from Camden Miller, two from Caleb Schaefer, and one from Anthony Wilburn. Uh, Wildcats, uh, again, 21 points in the second quarter on the first half. Uh, leading scorer for the uh, Hennessy Eagles, Hunter Weber, coming off the bench, hit two threes there, last two field goals. And if you take those away, it, it could be a lot worse. It'd be a 10-point lead, clearly, here for the Wildcats. But, uh, or actually, uh, no, even bigger than that, 12. So with that, it uh, looks like it'll be uh, cash and basketball. For the Wildcats in the second half, what do we need to do to, to get win number seven on the season? Uh, I just think we want... The first half went almost exactly like we wanted to. Like you said, if we can just stop those two threes, it's almost a perfect half of basketball for what we want against this Hennessy team. Um, Torres is usually their leading scorer. He's taken more threes against us than twos he has tonight. I think that's exactly what we wanted in the game plan. If we can just take care of the basketball, I think slow it down maybe a little bit this half will help us out. As long as we take care of the basketball and rebound, I think we'll be good to go. All right, Wildcats with the basketball. Again, a little 2-2-1 uh, two, two, here. On the press, a little different look. As Drake Woody get out of that corner there. As Cam Miller gets hit, no call. Acord with the jumper, it's up, and it falls. We'll take it. It's a good job by Acord there, just finding the basketball, knowing where he's out on the floor, rising up and hitting the jumper. So good work there. Acord's first bucket of the game comes on the first shot of the second half. We're well, starting a man-to-man -man out here defensively. Torres for three and is off. They got the rebound. I think they're going to get Nabavi with a foul right here. So Nobabi will pick up the reach foul. That'll stay here with the Eagles. That'll go against uh, the Wildcats. His first on the night. It'll be Eagle basketball on the end line. Torres on the switch. Stolen. Nice little tip out there by Acord. Cam Miller, no numbers. It's uh, two on four. Wildcats will set up. You can hear Coach Hardaway say good possession, and let's see what happens here as the Wildcats will extend out, try to get that high look. Nothing new on offense. Same business here as Jackson Vandriff roams the high post. I think we're going to be content to be slow and get something sweet. Need to take care of the basketball against Hennessy, though. So Drake Woody with the steal turnover. Jackson Vandriff, and he'll draw the foul. Can't get that. And one opportunity. So turnover leads to a bucket and also a foul. That's two fouls quickly against the Wildcats. And give credit to James Sims with the bucket. He's got, he had three at halftime. Make that five now. He'll go to the line and make the six. Again, Wildcats going with Nabavi, Woody, Vandruff, Acord, and Cam Miller. That one's missed. Loose ball on the floor is Drake Woody. Saved by Cam Miller. Goodness, a lot of contact. And I think that was Jackson Vandruff that made <laughs> Drake right. Woody down on that play. That's what it looked like to me at least. Nabavi splits the pressure, floaters up. In and out, doesn't fall, loose ball. Quickly down is number 30, Leighton Choate. Right-handers up, no good. Jackson Vandruff going strong for the rebound. Wildcats quickly back. All the way to Acord. Great job by Vandruff there to go to secure the rebound because Hennessy is crashing. Man, we have got to take care of the basketball. So give credit to Choate. He's gotten a couple steals back-to-back. -back. Vandruff knocks it out of his hands. Cam Miller with the rebound and... Well, yeah, Hardaway implores, slow down. We were fortunate there defensively. We had uh, Hunter was over there in the corner, the one hit the two, th two threes, and Choate just missed him that play. Wildcats will work it again against that 3-2 look. They'll go with Choate up top. He's got a couple steals. Another stolen pass. That's turnover number four for the Wildcats here in the second quarter, second half. Sims eyes the three. He'll shoot at this one as Drake Woody's in his face, and that's good. Yeah, and he is a capable three-point shooter. He's better going to the rack, but um, if he gets going, they've got a lot of people that if they see it go in the hoop, then they're just going to be more confident, play with confidence. And right here is just what we talk about. If you don't take care of the basketball against Hennessy, then you're going to allow them to just come yep. back to the basketball game. And that's really the difference between the two halves so far. So six-point leads to, uh, cut in half to three as the Wildcats entered the third quarter up 21-15. It's a... Nice five-three run, or nice, uh, nice run here for Coach Page and the bunch. Coach Hardaway's having the conversation. It, it's is it more than just making good passes? What's the scenario here? Uh, it is, and part of it is if 
the Hennessy player is in the passing lane and the Hennessy player is in my other passing lane, then you've got to be ready to drive against the zone. And in the first half, it was so much we were killing it with the pass. The Hennessy's now starting to jump these passing lanes. And I would look for Cam and Nate um, once he re-enters the game to start to attack a little bit more off the bounce. And I think we'll find a little bit of success. So now Bobby will have a seat. Uh, Anthony Wilburn's checked in for the Wildcats. Acord, Cam Miller, Woody here managing the three-man game. Wilburn in the middle. Go ahead and take care of it here as the Wildcats get it in. 5.30, third quarter. Wildcats up three. Give credit to turnovers. Have, turnovers, turnovers have created points. Five straight points for the uh, Eagles. I'd like us to put someone at the high post or at least flash someone there because that's really where that 3-2 is susceptible to be beat. Ooh. Why? That was tipped. Wow. So Wildcats extremely fortunate as Hunter Weber goes for that right in front of Coach Page. We get lucky on that one. So with that, Nababi will check back in. And again, uh, Drake Woody will have a seat as well as Acord as Jackson Vandruff checks back in. Wildcats extremely sloppy with the ball here. Hennessy back in there, 2-2-1, three quarter court press. And we're attacking it with an odd look. Yeah, Miller with the pass from Vandruff. Doesn't find him on the on the dive. Skip pass, Miller around, had a chance. Ooh, a little bit late on the whistle there. He already put the ball down. He was eyeing the Bobby, wanted that skip pass. Probably should have just let it go. Extra pass is always a good thing. So another turnover for the Wildcats. They've, they have, uh, <laughs> I think, about six turnovers right now and probably only one, uh, uh, one field goal. It has not been smooth sailing so far in the third quarter for the Wildcats. And that's what happens. you got a young team like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Helter Skelter, you know, learn how to play through this. Good dribble penetration and kick. Three balls no good. Going up high. Great oh, job by Schaefer there, just getting his hand on the basketball and leaving it there. Totally agree. As Sims hit, shoots the three, it was Simonek versus Schaefer, and you're exactly right. Totally agree, and great call there by the lead official to allow that to happen, not bail out on a, on a foul. With 2-3 out of the baseline, out of bounds, almost exclusively for Coach Hardaway. Good job by Schaefer and Jackson defensively to shore up, get the rebound. We're going back our direction now. Yeah, Torres got stuck under the rim, had nowhere to go. High screen there and roll. Nothing happened in there as Cam Miller will dove back out. Four minutes here, second second half, third quarter action. Wildcats just two points here in the start of the third quarter. Dump down to Schaefer. Schaefer draws a lot of pressure. It's a jump ball. And we'll have another jump ball. So good sportsmanship here between both teams. A, a good respectful uh, rivalry between these two teams. So uh, possession error will stay cashing. Wildcats looking pretty uh, rough here. Now Bobby will get the out of bounds from the end line. We'll start over, 347. We've got Vandruff now flashed in the high post. Now Bobby looking to get to Wilburn. You should continue to be patient and make good passes like we did in the first half. Of we work the zone, we will get a good look. It's just when we get a little bit too antsy, we start throwing the ball away. So we've got Schaefer running the short corner side to side as the Wildcats will run it up top between the Bobby, Wilburn, and Miller. Jackson Vandruff going up high, and you know, I guess it's just gonna see who's going to break first as uh, Coach Hardaway is gonna play a little stall ball here. Try to extend out this uh, Hennessy 3-2, and I don't think Coach Page is going to bite. I think he'll probably just run two at him eventually. He's making a call in right now. Um, I'm not sure. Exa yeah, he's getting ready to trap. Runs the second one at Nate. Luckily, Cam's a pretty solid. Oh, just unfortunate there. Heads up play by Cam to get a tip to maybe prevent the wide open layup down here. No shuffle on the walk, three balls up, and it's good. Credit Leighton Choate. This We've got a basketball game in Okarchi, folks. This is exciting. It's what the conference is all about.
Oh, but just more of the same here in this third quarter. Points off of turnovers. Buckets good by Sims. That's the first lead of the game, 25-23. And so, you know, uh, you got to give credit to Coach Page, right? You mentioned it in the 3-2. Instead of, uh, instead of allowing the extended wing pass, he's going out after it. Same, uh, same press here, but the Wildcats aren't making any adjustments whatsoever. They've given up, and essentially this is a 10-4 uh, a run to take the lead. And all the points scored by the Eagles have not come in half court. They come off of turnovers no, and really, transition. really, neither team has been able to score in the half court this half. It's just one team is turning the other over. And so Hennessy's getting these transition buckets that just aren't on the table for us because we're not being able to turn it over. I'd like to see us, if they're going to pick us up full court, maybe try to break it a little bit faster, get some stuff in transition. Because if we can get some wide open layups in transition, that's going to take them out of that full court press. Maybe have to settle them down a little bit. Um, but offensively, it's really, we just have to take care of the basketball, which is really easy for you and I to say when we're not playing. Um, I think they're all trying to pass too much. Yeah. Like passing is a good thing, but yeah. if I can't pass to, I can't, if I can't pass up and I can't pass down, that means that I should be able to beat my guy one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we've, Nate, Drake, and Cam are all too good of ball handlers to allow for, allow one guy to stop them. So we've got to start trying to pick up that double and then, get the mismatch down the floor and we've got numbers. But yeah, like right there. The Bobby on the baseline left hand does not go in. Good try there on the baseline. Try to probably just continue through off the backboard. Quickly down one and done is Choate. He'll work off and he'll get the block. But that offensive play, that offensive press breaker was a little promising because at least we get to the rack, get a nice little look. We continue to do that. We'll either get some foul calls or hopefully start to make some of our layups. Second count foul on Nababi. Now the foul count 3-0 in favor of uh, the Eagles this time. And, you know, here's a situation when the uh, Wildcats get up big on foul count. You know, their play of style changes, and now it's reversed. And so now they're expecting fouls and not getting them based on the same contact. Let's see if they can make the adjustment to how the officials are calling the second half. So a little delay game here as uh, they get uh, James Sims up top. Choke will shoot the three from the top. It's no good. No walk on. We'll get the foul and in one. Everything going the way of the Eagles. Hey, Andrew, see that with the young team. Maybe not quite sure who the leader is. We need someone to step up and cut the bleeding. Someone just needs to either get in there, get a layup, get in there, draw a foul, get to the free throw line. But it's just been going all Hennessy's way here in the third quarter. Matt, uh, free throw is missed, so we've got a four-point lead here for the Eagles, how the tables have turned. So they, a good quality possession here. So another 3-2 look here as Cam Miller's up top. The Bobby flashing in and out. So he'll replace Cam Miller, will go down, and Chance Acord will come off the wing, see if the Wildcats will work off that right side. They do. Staying patient, under a minute. I think we would be fine with taking the last shot of the half, but we're not necessarily looking for it. Just going to work it until we get something, a good quality look. Another turnover. Eyes off the ball. I mean, these are, un these are unforced turnovers. As Choke gets his basket, he's got five. And just not taking care of the basketball, just real careless with it so far this quarter. Wildcats with at least 10 turnovers here in the third quarter alone, and most of them unforced. Just bad basketball. Let's we'll see if the Wildcats can clean this up. The Bobby will have the ball. He'll kick it back out. Decides not to go baseline on number five, Seth Simonek. Gets a high screen. Drive is there. Had a chance for the roll. Five seconds. Acord. Shoots the three, it's up. Bang! Chance Acorn that and Wildcats huge. needed that one. So a big time three for Chance. He's got five. And that cuts the lead to three for the Eagles. As that was a <laughs> horrific third quarter for the Wildcats. That was a gigantic three. <laughs> you, I mean, we talked about with Hennessy, they hit those two big threes at the end of halftime. A three-point lead is a, not a huge difference from six, but it sure feels a lot better. It looks a lot better on the scoreboard. Yeah, if so, we take care of the basketball, we are still winning this basketball. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. So Wildcats up twenty-one fifteen at halftime. 
Eagles give him credit. Uh, almost all their points coming off of turnovers, Wildcat turnovers, essentially go on a 14-5 to run to uh, take over and have a what was a six-point lead for the Wildcats now is a three-point lead for the Eagles. And you'd expect that. It's not like this is a bad Eagles team. They're ranked fourth in the state for a reason, 7-2. and two. Got some talented guys. Uh, again, uh, give credit to uh, guys like James Sims who uh, – who came in and have put in six points or seven points in the second half alone. He's got ten uh, to help out uh, with the uh, comeback here for the Eagles. Wildcats will be on defense. They're going to go with, um, uh, they'll be going with Drake Woody, Cam Miller, Chance Acord, Jackson Vandruff, and Nathan Nabobby. So we've got eight on the clock. Wildcats got a chance down one, one score, one possession. You just need to take it one possession at a time. You need to stop here and then go down and get a bucket and then another stop and then a bucket, and then we're right back in this ball game. Jumpers up. Torres with the rebound. Acord with a little bump on Torres, and he'll go to the line, and that's five fouls for this <laughs> for the Wildcats. You told me they was going to even out somehow. Is it? When's that start for us, partner? Oh, I don't. I'm just, I can only guess or assume. I don't know, but in the – third quarter I don't know if we touched the paint outside of the one time Nate went in there with his left hand it's really hard to get foul calls if we're just going to continue to pass along the perimeter and also we're turning the ball over a ton but yep, yep. I think we just if we can drive strong I'd like to see us get the ball back to the high post didn't happen very much if at any in the third quarter and that's where we had most of our success in the first half totally agree with you partner all right so basket uh, baskets are made free throws good for Torres pressure here Nababi will We'll get across the timeline. Skip pass finds Cam Miller on the opposite wing. Cam Miller will drive a little jump stop off the glass. Love it. It's Cam. a great pass by Nathan to set Cam up uh, uh, to set Cam up over on the right side. So Wildcats get it back to three. 31-28. Nice job there by Cam. Good control. Good take. I like that. Wildcats extending out that two three. Little flip around. Good ball movement by Hennessy. Three balls up. No good. Flashing the lane is number three, James Sims. If wow. you do not get a body on him, then he will get every single offensive rebound out here. He is the best athlete on the floor, except maybe Jackson Vandruff. I do think Sims probably jumps a little bit higher. We just need to get a body on him, and that will be fine. So Wildcats get the turnover. And so I guess the conversation Coach Hardaway is saying is that it got tipped out of his hands as Nabavi curled across the middle. They say no go. And uh, it's a completely different game here in the second half, and it's uh, been in favor of the Eagles. Caleb Schaefer will be checking in, so uh, Drake Woody will check out. And this is these young teams. This is what's going to have to happen. They have to learn through adversity and figure that out. So under seven here, Wildcats on the turnover, still down five. And you're exactly right on that blocking out. They, the give credit to the Eagles. They are crashing the boards and extremely physical. Torres with a jumper, and it's good, and he's getting uncorked. He's got four in the second half, six total. It's the biggest lead for the Eagles at seven. And so that'll be the first foul. It took ten minutes for the uh, Eagles to get a foul called on them on a dribble penetration there, and and you said it, you know, it was time to stop passing through the the, 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 fast, uh, the press. It's time to dribble through. Nabavi draws the foul. It'll be on the baseline here as the Wildcats will set up. Schaefer will have a seat. Let's see what Coach Hardaway has drawn up here. A little two-man game probably over here on the baseline. Let's see between Nabavi baseline will skip pass cross. Vandruff nowhere to go. Good pick up there by Torres. Okay, Still so a lot of time left in this basketball game. We don't have to start rushing yet, but we do need to get good shots out down here offensively. So Nababi will set up. Wildcats will take a look. Acord asking for it on that open wing, and we'll have a push. Is this going to go against Torres? I guess so. So that'll be it his. Is. That'll be his third. I guess it is. We thought that might have been his fourth as they gave Sims the foul earlier, which I thought would have been his third. Baseline out of bounds, Wildcats looking to get into Vandruff. Bad oh. pass by Miller. They were expecting that. Vandruff slows down Choate. Good work there by the senior post. 
And another turnover leads to another possession here for the Eagles. Eagles will spread it out now with a seven point commanding lead. Wildcats used to using a little bit of man here, so Drake Woody will come out and get Choate. Yeah, I think we just matched up. I and mean, part of this game is a lot of these Tennessee players were in this game last year. Um, what I mean by that is they they played the cash in. They were in, you know, your conference tournament championships, your conference tournament third place games, your semifinal games. It's a familiar familiar experience for a, a bunch of them, especially Torres and Sims. Yep. And then with the Wildcats, I mean, outside of Jackson Vandriff, have any of them played in the conference semifinal nope, game? Nope, and so nope. it's not trying to make an excuse for them because you'd like to see them dig deep. This is a game they can win. This is a game they should win. We were in control, so – Regardless, this is going to be a great learning experience for these young boys. Totally agree. Luke, always with the uh, optimistic, positive spin. It's like you coach. And what's also nice is with the conference tournament being as early as it is, we play Hennessy again. Yep, we sure do. We sure do. All right, so uh, out of the timeout here, the Wildcats will be on defense. Uh, let's see as uh, both uh, Coach uh, Hardaway and Coach Page try to draw up their scenario and situation with 540 left here in the fourth quarter. Semifinal game live from Okarchi, Oklahoma. Winner will take on Okarchi, hometown Okarchi. Loser will take on Fairview, coming off a fresh state championship in football. Wildcats will enter in with Nabavi, Vandruff, Acord, Miller, and Caleb Schaefer. A little 1-3. Well, I say 1-3-1. One, one. Uh, we'll see what, what happens here. I do think you're right. So let's see... Uh, the Eagles are able to take care of the ball as the Wildcats will try to pressure up top. Torres on the wing. He'll go ahead and take. He'll take a dive. Goes at Schaefer. Draws the foul. See official. So uh, Coach Hardaway pointing to the baseline official asking, why didn't you call it? Uh, uh, so that'll send Torres to the line. That's team foul number six, three on Caleb Schaefer. Right now I don't think we have any cash and players in deep foul trouble. I know Schaefer and Jackson both have three fouls. Torres makes the first. Schaefer will have a seat as Drake Woody will check in. Eight point lead for the uh, for the Eagles. Potentially nine will be the biggest lead of the night. I mean, we had 21 points in the first half and just seven so far here in the second. Yep. yep. Well, turnovers will do that, right? Yep, just really the tail of two halves so far for the Cash and Wildcat team. Woody to uh, Cam Miller on the right wing. Wildcats trying to get uh, Nababi flashed in at the high post. They do find him. He'll go ahead and drive against Torres. Floaters up, and it's good. It's a good take there by Nababi. He's got five. It's a good bucket right there. Now we need to come down and get a stop and just take this possession by possession here in the fourth quarter. So Wildcats cut it to seven, 37-30. Trap is there in time is the pass. Choate, we've got the lengthy Jackson Vandruff up top. Nice help, nice help there as Nababi was trying to come back. And the Eagles can stay patient. They don't have to do anything here. Wildcats are going to have to extend out that defense here as we get 430. Yeah, we're just trying to speed him up, make him make a bad decision, take a bad shot. And there was the bad shot, but nobody on the rebound. His chance Acord was the closest cash and player. I think it was missed so bad that nobody was in the vicinity. Yeah, it's just a little harder to rebound out of the zone than it is a man because with your man-to-man, -man, you've got your box-out matchups right there. And for a zone, you don't necessarily always have a man right next to you put a body on while Hardaway wanting the double dribble as Choate dribbled it off his bottom, and that would have been the correct call. It wasn't there. I'm going to timeout by Coach Page and the Eagles. So that'll be a timeout. Wildcats uh, will head over to the sideline. And uh, it is a 30-second variety, so I was checking to see. We'll make sure and keep it there. Co uh, Coach Tishner's like, come on, didn't you see it? And he was like, I didn't see it. And so the idea is they wanted the double dribble turnover. It wasn't there. Coach, uh, I guess uh, Coach Hardaway and the bunch, they're just going to have to extend. They're going to have to burn a lot of energy here to try to get a ball. They're down three possessions. Yeah, defensively, you just got there's still four minutes left in the basketball game. There's plenty of time. You will have the offensive possessions to score eight points. But if you keep allowing them to score, are you going to have the offensive possessions to score yep. 10 points or score 12 points? So we really need to start getting stops down here defensively. Yep. And then I'd like to see us keep attacking the lane like right there, just like Nathan did, got inside, got the nice little floater over the front of the rim. 
Yeah, yeah. attacking Torres would be the right idea. The kid's got three fouls, yes. right? So and then you it, fine attacking Torres or attacking Sims, and they've got to come contest the shot. Then that'll allow Schaefer and Jackson to have a better opportunity on yep. the offensive glass as well, uh, which I think is something we've been missing tonight. Schaefer comes up top now on defense. If they get that trap, need that. Nabavi with the steal. Let's see if he can get the run out. Great job. Nabavi with the floater misses the baseline drive. That's unfortunate. Needed that one. Schaefer is unable to get the rebound. Vandruff with the steal. Nabavi with it at midcourt. Wildcats have another chance. Need a bucket right there. Good. A great back to back defensive stand by there, right there by the Wildcats. Man, I'm. Mixing up my words, I'm so excited watching this. Ooh. Dump down underneath the Nathan, Abavi. They call it travel. So Vandruff getting absolutely mauled on the baseline, no call. And again, just two fouls against the Eagles in the second half. Wildcats are gonna have to extend out that defense and play strong. Another timeout by Trey Page. That's gonna be. Uh, his fourth, he's got one left, and the uh, Wildcat faithful extremely upset as uh, Jackson Vandruff, who is an absolute bull, getting beat up on the baseline. No call, they call the, the walk call. So here's a chance for Hardaway to calm his players down, get them to focus, get back on defense and work again. They got two good steals there. They came up empty, though. Yeah, we just got to – we have to score to win this basketball game. I'm – we're, I, we've been playing very good defense throughout um, outside of the transition looks, but in the half court, even our half court press has looked good, half court trap, got, get, gotten a few turnovers, just really struggling to score here in the second half. All right, so with 3.10 left, 37-30. Again, uh, as, uh, as offered up, it's been a tough second half. Wildcats only scoring nine points in the second half. And give credit to the Eagles, they've turned up the heat, gotten some turnovers. And that's resulted in a seven-point lead here. Wildcats coming back out with Nabavi, Miller, Vandruff, Schaefer, and Acord. Jackson Vandruff, a little smile on his face. Kid's a master competitor. That's still a lot of basketball game left. Wildcats haven't attempted a three as well here, so we'll see what happens. Wildcats extending that two-three here. Nabavi. Try on the chase down, nothing there. Choate with the dump, they'll tip out. He gets his own missed pass. Miller, good work on the defense. Wildcats extending those guards up top. High post shot is up and good. Give credit to Sims making that one. And he's had a phenomenal second half. He has 11 of his 14 in the second half. I'd like to see us get the ball up the court a little bit faster, especially at the end of the game. You know, your possessions are limited. There's still a lot of basketball game left just not as much as you'd really like to be walking up the floor the bobby three balls up from the baseline that is short no legs kids tired quickly down are the eagles 218 almost desperation time here for the wildcats down 39 to 30 walk call there we'll get it excellent call by the official all right use your legs So Schaefer will have a seat. Drake Woody checking in for a little offense for Coach Hardaway. And you're used to this, right? Little substitution offense for defense and defense for offense. For sure. With nine points, if you can hit a three right here is maybe big. And I think that's why he's bringing Drake Woody in. If for some reason the defense falls asleep or gets these out there, it would be nice to get him a great look. Now Bobby on the back cut on the baseline, picked up by the Eagles. Good look. Looking to see if we can't get another screen and roll. Vandriff flashes up high. Let's see if the Wildcats can try to find him. Acord with the ball. Oh, uh, turnover boy. by Acord. He's had a rough night, and that's going to be an easy layup to Leighton Choate. So 41-30, 140 here. Desperation time for the Wildcats. Woody will spin it out to Miller. Someone's going to have to figure it out, and he'll shoot it. Nabobby with the three. That one's long. That's no good. Rebound to the Eagles, and that'll be a foul. So that'll be one and one. That's a seventh team foul. Just really the tale of two halves here for the Hennessy Eagles uh, and the Cash and Wildcats. Did a great job in the first half taking care of the basketball, hitting the high post, getting good looks. And in the second half, you know, it's the same defense. It's probably the pressure's ramped up a little bit more. They're 
actually getting up onto our guards when they're dribbling the basketball. But yep. it's real simple. When you watch film, you're going to know why you lost this game. <laughs> Miller up top, working to get it to Vandruff on the low block. Skip pass to Woody. His three balls up. That's short. He'll get his own rebound. He'll skip through over to Acord. Acord for three from the baseline. That is off, and the Wildcats cannot get anything, and we'll have a foul underneath. So that'll be team foul number eight for the Wildcats. That'll be uh, that'll go against Drake Woody, his first. And that'll send the uh, Eagles to the line. That'll be number five, Seth Simonek. Seth with four points on the game. So with 103 on the clock, fourth quarter, banks it in, and it's been, I gotta tell you, that, you know, you got, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and the Eagles have had a lot of mixture of that for the, uh, for the second half here in this comeback. Completely misses uh, that one, Wildcats quickly down, one minute, 42-30, Wildcats, Bobby with the drive, baseline jumper, it's good. Timeout, Wildcats, he's got seven. So maybe a lesson, maybe a little bit more of that next time. Yes, right? I think a little bit more of going to the basket. I mean, passing is good, and you do want to beat the zone with the pass. But you kill them with the pass the entire first half, and then they jump in passing lanes. And I'd like to see us make the adjustment a little bit early next time. Um, we've been passing it all around, and if all of a sudden I'm turning it over no matter which way I pass, that just simply means I've got to go attack the basket. Yep, yep, amen. All right, so it's a 10-point game, 42-32. Again, it was 10-6 Wildcats in the first quarter, 21-15 in the second, 26-29 in the third quarter for the Eagles. Uh, and while the Eagles, uh, again, started off slow, they they drop uh, 14 in the third quarter, and it looks like they're dropping another 13 in the second or in the fourth quarter to take a commanding 10-point lead. It's just allowing them to get out in transition to get some easy buckets. It's easy to score if I can get a steal and get downhill. Yeah, yeah. and that's what Okarchi, if, if, if Cashin wins this game, and that's what they're going to see against Okarchi tomorrow night. That's what, if, if Hennessy wins, that's what they're going to see tomorrow night. And and so it'll be, uh, you know, uh, what I was hoping is for a Cashin victory, seeing this pressure and seeing how that translates to Okarchi, who does a fantastic job with their full court press. Wildcats in their own full court press here. Looking for that deep pass, not there as Acord picks him up. Nabavi on choke, quickly out. Torres with the ball. He'll draw a double team. Nate is trying to foul. Nabavi trying to foul. This time they, they don't want to call it. They've called it quite a bit already. And so that'll send uh, Torres to the line. <laughs> All right, so Torres goes to the line. He already has four made free throws on the night. He's... Made hay there tonight. Really has been a non-factor, in my opinion, in this game. Uh, really, honestly, I believe it's come down to James Sims uh, in, in, in this game. He's been the difference factor. And it's not just that, but also uh, Seth Simonek on the glass has been fantastic uh, defensively as well. For sure. It's all been, you know, just rebounding and ball security is what this game was all about. Cam Miller will work the side to Chance Acord, Wildcats with 35. He'll drive, a little drop step. Right-hander doesn't fall, and we'll get the foul. See, but right there is exactly what yep. we were talking about earlier. Even though Chance doesn't score, once he touches the paint, then Torres has got to step up and help on that drive, which allows Jackson to get that offensive rebound. So uh, that'll be a foul for, that's just the third team foul against the Eagles. Uh, Vandra finds himself back at the line, and that one falls off. Vandruff with 10 points all in the first half has been held scoreless. So he's been negated here in the second half. And really just lack of scoring altogether by the, uh, the Cash and Wildcats. Another missed, lay, uh, missed free throw. Wildcats trying to foul. That uh, would be a double bonus here as the Wildcats now Every touch sending the Eagles to the line. That'll send uh, James Sims to the line. We talked about him early. Just had three in the first half. Came back with uh, four made field goals from the fee, uh, from the two point, another three pointer. So this will be his uh, first attempt at the free throw line here in the second half. He's able to make that one. 
it doesn't matter who you are. To beat Hennessy, you got to do two things, and I talked about it early, and I will always talk about it. you got to take care of the basketball, and you got to rebound. And in the first half, we did a great job of it. In the second half, we didn't. Miller with the ball. Ray Woody on the opposite side. Woody almost walks. Ooh -hoo. Very close. Nababi with the right hand. Three balls up. It's a little long. Acord with a great offensive rebound. Put back, turnaround is no good. Acord's has had a rough night. We'll have a tie ball. Stay here with Cashin. And again, two made threes are not going to do it for the Wildcats tonight. Again, uh, Nababi and Chance Acord with the only made threes of tonight. Big part of the Cashin offense. Out of bounds, Wildcats with 7.9. Trying to go out of bounds. Not much there. As the Eagles definitely eyeing the three-point line here. The Bobby out of bounds. Tip into Vandriff. He'll go up. <laughs> Loses it off the leg. And that'll be a foul with 1.8. And that'll, that'll most likely be it. As that'll send number 30, Leighton Choate, to the line. Choate with all of his points in the second half. He's got eight. With 1.8, Acord with the last second heave. And it goes over, and that'll be a final. Wildcats fall 32-46 on an awful second half. Give credit to the Eagles, pressure defense. Wildcats fall to 6-3, and three, and they'll be taking on Fairview Yellow Jackets. Tomorrow uh, afternoon in the third place game. Luke, we appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh, if there was one word of advice uh, for the Wildcats in the locker room as we leave, what's that for them? Uh, you just got to take care of the basketball. It's really, uh, th this game came down to one thing. We had too many turnovers in the second half, and in my opinion, that's why we lost it. But you get to play Hennessy again. Um, you can, you're playing for third place tomorrow. Coach Hardaway always wants to win two games in a tournament. It's one of the first things I remember him saying. If you win two games in a tournament, usually means you're coming on with hardware. Yep. It's a winning record. So, obviously, you want to win this game tonight. You want to defend your Three Rivers Conference title, but you still have an opportunity to go out and beat Fairview tomorrow and win third place, and third place is better than fourth place. Yep. Um, you get to see Hennessy again. You know, they're a little bit older. As long as the boys can learn from this and grow and don't lose like this again. Don't come out at halftime and not be ready for the pressure and start throwing the basketball and be yep. willy-nilly with it. Um, we're yeah. a young team. I think yeah. we're going to grow, and I think this will be good for us in the long run. Yep, I agree. I agree. So, for my band, Maddox Gibson, Hank Brown on the cameras. Appreciate you guys watching. Even to Bobby Luke Jenkins bringing you tonight's action. We'll be back tomorrow. Girls play as well tomorrow. Let's uh, make sure that I – let's get the bracket up here. Let's take a look. I apologize. I should have had that ready to go. Uh, but uh, I, I, I do believe the girls will be up tomorrow. It looks like uh, they'll be taking on – uh, Thomas. Thomas. That's right. They'll be taking on Tomas uh, for the third place game at 4 p.m. The boys will be right after that. Thankfully, we have back to back at 5:30, where the Wildcat boys will be taking on Fairview. So the Wildcats fall 32-46 on a horrific second half. But give credit to the Eagles. Wildcats move to six and three. We appreciate you guys joining us. Go Cats and God bless. <laughs>